The most exciting part of the 1996 movie Twister wasn't the groundbreaking volumetric visual effects, no. It was the awesome Doppler weather radar display. Yeah, that's not fooling anyone. Hey, and welcome to Making. Yeah, computer displays aren't ever going to be the most exciting element of a movie, but a VFX compositor's work isn't always limited to explosions, lightsabers and dinosaurs. Creating fake computer displays is something you'll no doubt be asked to do, whether it's for a professional production, a fan film, or whatever shit you can get Amazon Prime to commission. I've shared two tutorials so far showing how much time plays a part in authenticity. So in this video, I'll first show how you can reproduce the look of a Doppler weather radar, and then I'll demonstrate a different method again to create a line-by-line -line update. I've based the imagery off screenshots from US tornadoes, which I'm assuming is United States tornadoes and not like tornadoes are us. I'm here in After Effects with a 1080p comp at 30fps. And the first thing I'm going to do is select the ellipse tool and then double click it to create a circular shape layer which is perfectly centered. And let's now just expand the ellipse on the timeline until we can see the size. And then uncheck the infinity loop icon and set the sizes to 700 each. This is going to be our storm. So next, let's be neat and click back on the layer and hit enter to rename it to storm or windy bit. Back in the content section, click on the tiny add menu and choose gradient fill and then delete both the stroke and fill properties. Expand gradient fill and change the type to radial. And sometimes you can't see the gradient handles. If you can't, a couple of things to check are that you've got the select tool selected and that you have the shape itself selected. But because of the way we created this particular shape, everything is nicely centered. So just change the endpoint's X position to 350, half of the circle's radius. We need to swap the gradient around, so click Edit Gradient, and then drag the petals into the opposite positions. And after you click OK, we're going to use this gradient to drive a colorama effect. So go to Gradient, Color Correction, Colorama. Colorama is a weird effect when added. Because its default input is set to Intensity, you can very quickly use the output options to create fire or landscape colors. But all we're going to change this time is to expand input and adjust the phase to minus 43 degrees. This uses the gradient going from black and making it the most intense, which is set to red, to the outer edges being purple. Now let's make the circle look like an actual storm by first roughening up its edges. Go to Effect, Distort, Turbulent Displace. And up the amount to 150, but drop the scale to 30 and increase the complexity to 6. And now, hold ALT and click on the evolution stopwatch to add a simple expression. Time times 50. Which gets us the result of something… organic-y? But storms are spiral-like in nature. Trust me, I know I made three tutorials on the golden spiral and spiral galaxies. But this time I'm doing it different. For simplicity. Go to Effect. Distort. Twirl and set the angle to 130 and set a keyframe. Then at the end of the comp, increase this to 190. Now I know it doesn't look quite right yet, but notice the twirl effect uses the comp coordinates. Hit P to expose the layer's position property, and watch what happens when I move the layer. Provided the layer is not in the centre of the comp, we get this cool, natural, spiralling storm. And if you do need it to be in the centre, just adjust the twirl coordinates instead. And of course, if we set some keyframes for our storm's position, we get our animation. One more effect for this layer, add another turbulent displace effect, and up the amount to 160, but drop the scale to 3. This gives us wavy edges breaking up the shape. Ok, now for some set dressing. Go to Layer, New, Solid. Make it a black solid and make sure it's comp sized and hit OK. Rename this to Background and drag it to the bottom of the comp and padlock it. Now, we need a map, 
and I found one and it was all sorts of pretty colours. So I applied hue saturation to it to make it grayscale, and then I applied the invert effect so all the lines were whitish and the colours almost black, and then a levels effect to deepen the blacks and lighten the whites. Then with it still at the top of the comp, set the transfer mode to screen. I've rushed through that bit because that's what I had to do. You will have your own challenges based on the map you pick, but if you get stuck, ping me a comment in the um, comments and I'll see if I can help. We'll also need a grid. It'll match the look of us tornadoes. Yes, I know that's not how you're meant to say it, but it amuses me. Create a new solid and call it grid. And then go to effect, generate, grid. And to make this easy to adjust, set the size from to width slider and set the width to 120. Those white lines are pretty intensive, so drop the border to one pixel. If you do end up resizing the screen, you might need to thicken that so they don't cause flickering issues. And there's our base animation! If you're enjoying this tutorial so far, then there's a few things you can do to help me out. Ideally, you'll like this video. That boosts my engagement results, meaning YouTube is more likely to display this video to other viewers. If you subscribe, that boosts my ego. And if you leave a comment, it's a double hit of engagement ranking and ego boosting. And if you can't think of anything to post, how about posting the secret code word for this video? <laughs> Steak and eggs. The best thing about asking for these cryptic code words is when someone posts months after I've published and I have no idea why initially. To, okay, to make this look less animated and more like really complex data is being fed into a system, let's now take this comp from the project panel and drag it onto the new comp button. Then go to layer, time, enable time remapping. In the ATC video, I used the posterized time effect, but this time we need to do a bit more later. But we also need to limit the animation to once per second. So, holding Alt, click on the time remap stopwatch and type math.floor, open brackets, time plus one, close brackets. So math.floor is rounding down the time value so that we only get integers, no 1.2 seconds. Now make sure this layer is selected and then go to edit, duplicate, or hold control and tap D. On the top layer, tap U to expose the time remap keyframes. And then from the bottom layer, use the pick whip to link to the top values. So we have two comps whose time remapping is controlled by the top comp. But edit the bottom expression to add minus one. If we take a look at the time codes generated, you can see that the bottom comp is now exactly one second behind the top comp. So next, with the top comp selected, go to Effect, Transition, CC Line Sweep. Set the angle to zero. And if I solo this layer for a moment and adjust the completion, you can see what the transition is doing. At zero seconds, set the completion value to 100 and set a keyframe. Now use the time indicator to go to one second and set another keyframe. Then use the page up key to move one frame back and set the completion to zero. Now hold alt and click on the completion stopwatch and using the tiny expressions library, go to property, loop out type cycle. And then let's see what we got. The line sweep animation will loop forever. Adjusting the thickness will let you control how big the update line is going to be. And now if we unsolo the layer, we get a complex looking Doppler weather radar system, all ready for two performers to discuss how bad the situation is going to be. I don't know about you, but I'd probably take a brolly with me if I have to go out. 